All right, guys, for this one, I'm going to help us get the integral set up and changed into polar coordinates. And then once we get to a point where the integral should be doable, um, I'm going to let you guys do that, guy, that on your own, and you can check your answer in the notes. So the first step to computing one of these integrals is to get an idea of what the region itself looks like. And in this case, we were given, we were told that the region is bounded by these three curves, or these three equations. And we can tell just by looking at these that two of them look like circles. And the third one, though, tells us that our region is going to just live in the upper half of the xy plane. So y is greater than or equal to zero. So the first thing we should do then is try to get a good sketch of this region, and then we can try to think about how it's going to, how, what's going to change when we convert to polar coordinates. But since we're just in the upper half plane, we only need to give ourselves room to work in the upper half plane. And let's start by graphing the first one. So I'll just color code this. This one's going to be blue. This is the circle who's centered at the origin whose radius is 1. So this one is centered at the origin and it has a radius of 1. It goes through 1 and all, and negative 1 over here, but 1 in all the major directions, major axes. And then the second one, this one is x squared plus y squared equals 4, but of course 4 is 2 squared, so this is a circle with radius 2. And again, this is the upper half of the circle, and my sketch is a little, a little choppy here. But now the region that we're looking at is the region, I'm going to sketch it in a very specific way. It's the region, or I'm going to shade it, I should say, in a specific way. It's the region bounded between these two portions of the circle. Okay? And so now what we want to try to do, this is obviously, there are circles here, so this probably feels like it should be done in polar coordinates, or it would be useful to do in polar coordinates. So what we should try to do now is rewrite this uh, region in terms of the boundaries for r and theta. So how are r and theta changing here? And actually, this turns out to be a really nice region in polar coordinates because this is actually a polar rectangle. So in the first thing we can do is think about how r is changing. And so r is going from r equals 1, starts, starts right here, and then it moves out to r equals 2. So the boundaries for r are just numbers. It goes from 1 to 2. Those are the boundaries for r. All right. On the other hand, how is theta changing? Well, theta is going to take this little line segment that we just built and sweep it out through the whole upper half plane. And so it starts over here with theta equal to 0. And as th theta sweeps around this region, it ends over here at theta equal to pi. So again, our theta is just bounded by two numbers, two constants. So this is a polar rectangle. All right? So those are going to be the bounds of our integral. So I'm just going to write the final integral over here. We're going to go from 0 to pi in the theta integral and 1 to 2 in the r integral. We do still need to transform the integrand, though. So remember, our polar transformation was that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine of theta. Okay? And so we just plug those into this equation very carefully, and I'm going to use parentheses here because we still have, we're going to have more work to do. But the 3x becomes 3r cosine theta, just one for one substitution here, right? Same thing for the y. y is going to get replaced by r sine theta, but that one's squared, so this one becomes plus 4r squared sine squared theta. And now here's the key. We have to remember how to appropriately deal with this area element, the dA. And in the previous uh, two videos, we have shown in two different ways that dA in polar coordinates is equal to r dr d theta. This extra r is crucial, right? And so that's going to make our integral have another factor of r. My parentheses are important here now, right? So another factor of r times dr times d theta. Okay? And so I'll just do one more step of just multiplying through. This, this r has got to get multiplied through to each term, right? It's got to get multiplied through to each term inside the parentheses before we can integrate. Um, so, and I'll end on this one and let you guys finish the integral off yourself. Um, but this becomes the double integral, theta is on the outside, r is on the inside, of 3r squared cosine theta plus 4r cubed sine squared theta dr d theta. Okay, and so this is the integral that you're going to want to compute 
And when you work this out, you should get the answer, the same answer as uh, it says in the notes.